I used to be an army interrogator. One thing they, the US Army, does prepare you for is that you're gonna have to hear horror stories from literal terrorists and you're taught to not have a negative reaction. I was literally told, this guy's gonna brag about killing your friend, get the f over it, you have a job to do. Because by pretending to be their friend and agreeing with them on whatever they've done, you'll get more useful info. You'll save more lives. Not just American soldiers, but lives of innocent Afghans. What they don't prepare you for is how much fun you're gonna have talking to these people. To a large degree, they are just like us. You can tell them dirty jokes and they'll laugh. They'll share their lived experiences and you'll actually be able to relate to these people. They'll have a lot of the same wants, desires, and complaints you yourself have. They'll talk about their terrorist boss and you'll be like, that sounds like my first sergeant. He's a total asshole for no reason. I hate my boss. You get used to chatting with these terrorists and for a select few, you'll even miss talking to them. The number one question people always ask me is, did you torture anyone? Which is such a dumb question. Does anyone expect a soldier to ever admit to a war crime? If you didn't know, there are no statute limitations on war crimes. Even if I did, I'm not telling anyone. Believe it or not, Uncle Sam doesn't allow it. Those who get caught go to military jail for a very, very long time. And if I'm being honest, Torture just isn't worth the risk to your own career. It can and has worked. God's honest truth. It's just not the best thing to do with 99.999% of people you end up interrogating. Anyone who says torture doesn't work, they're stupid. It does work. There are just better ways to get the info you need. Way too many downsides to torture, so you'll never meet a U.S. Army interrogator who's ever actually done it. Well, okay, you might meet some Vietnam vets who've tortured people, but no one from GWAT. Rules of war have changed since then. I do sympathize with the people of Afghanistan. They were dealt a bad hand at life, and some of them had children kidnapped by the Taliban and then were forced to fight us if they wanted their kids back alive. I don't know how many Afghans found themselves in that exact situation, but it wasn't zero. If you've ever talked to someone who's deployed to Afghanistan, they will have a favorite Afghan. Mine is Papa John, and I'll link the video I made about him below. It was easy for me to never become a terrorist because I wasn't born in a country that went through 40 years of war and ended up with terrorists who run the government. I made joke about our politicians being terrorists, because they are, but in reality, I was born in a safe country with next to no terrorists, so I never even had to think about it. It's a much different story for the people of Afghanistan. A lot of them never had the opportunity to not be a terrorist. We did invade their country after all. Some of them just thought they were defending their land and their family. And even for some of them, that's all they did. There's no way to fight a war without innocent civilians dying. This is why war is bad and we should avoid it at all costs. My country bombing Afghanistan for 20 plus years is not something I take pleasure in. It's not what I want it to happen. It's not what I want the history books to show. But I also have no regrets because they refused to turn over Bin Laden and now they must sleep in the bed they made. Random fun fact, since you're still here, army interrogators aren't actually called interrogators. They're called human intelligence collectors. That's the actual job title. When I entered the army in 2006, the MOS military operational skill was 97 echo, but today I believe it's 35 Mike. Just a interesting fun fact for you.